Good day, listeners and viewers. Um, yes, what a privilege again to gather to get together again and just to come and sit and talk about Jesus, talk about what He declared upon us, what He's busy doing in our lives. Um, just to talk about the season, things that can help us, things that can help us to refocus so that we get back into our positions, that we get back our joy, that we get back our life, and that we totally walk and step into the blessings of God. But let's pray together. Father, I praise you. I thank you for this amazing season and time. A, a time that we're in, we are so challenged, a time that we get tested. But most of all, it's a time of blessing because you form us, you mold us, and you draw us closer to you. It's such a time where you show us how desperate you are for a relationship of intimacy and where you call us to this greater level of intimacy, of oneness, and where we walk into a place and a realm of greater expectation for the manifestation of Jesus. Lord, and thank you that you have chosen us for this season, that you have appointed us for this season. And we just want to declare today that we truly love you. And our desire is to step into that place, that pathway, that calling, that purpose, that destiny that you have called us to be. Our desire is to only glorify you, to exalt you, and to lift you up high. We say thank you for what you're going to release into us right now. And we know where your glory gets released, everything gets transformed. And we praise you for that. In the name above all names, the names of Jesus Christ. Amen. People, yes, if we look at what's going on in the world, if we look around us, we look at our friends, our families, we look at churches, we look at governments, nations, everything. We see a lot of chaos and um, confusion and we see that there's so much fear and desperation in people, anxiety, and that we truly are walking um, in the seasons of the unknown. But the reality, it will only be unknown to you if you're not in relationship with God. Because God reveals everything to His children. God reveals everything to His sons and daughters. And we've got the possibility to know and to see into the future because each and every one of us got a prophetic gifting. And what does um, prophetic gifting help you with is to foretell and to foretell what's going to happen in the future where God comes and he reveals everything to you to tell you what you need to prepare for, what you need to um, put in place and position yourself in to be able to keep on standing in the future. I think a amazing person to look at and his lifestyle and his declarations is the Apostle Paul. I just love um, reading his books, his writings, his scriptures. Um, it's just such a testimony and what a testimony to focus on today in this time and season. I want to start with you that the letter of Paul to the Philippians. It's a powerful scripture, Philippians 1. And I want to walk with you on a journey through this to see what can we do, what could help us, what could assist us to be the revelation of Jesus Christ. But remember, you and I have been created for Him, for His glory. We belong to Him. And we've been created and He told us, instructors, go and imitate me. So at the moment, if we go through heavy trails and tribulations, um, it's sometimes difficult. It's sometimes difficult, and especially when we start looking at what we are surrounded with in the natural. It steals our focus, steals our joy, everything. Philippians 1 verse 1, I'm going to read it for you out of the Amplified. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ, the Messiah, to all the saints, God's consecrated people in Christ Jesus, who are at Philippi, with the bishop, overseers, and deacons, their assistants. Amazing. Paul, a bondservant. That a bondservant is somebody that voluntarily chooses 
to serve, to be, in other words, merely a slave to somebody. And a bond service could be released in the biblical times in a certain era. I think it's, I might be corrected here. It could be up to five years. And then the owner could let him go or sell him. But then he can choose to stay with the owner. And then he gets taken to a doorpost where all is pierced through his ear to say that he choose to be with that owner permanently, that he loves the owner and he wants to be with him for the rest of his life. And that is where we should be, bond servants of Jesus Christ, where we come to this place and we choose to serve him, to uplift him for the rest of our lives. And it's so interesting, the word deacons, and it means assistance for the leaders, the overseers. And I just want to read it to you. As translated from the Aramaic, the Greek text is deacons. The word for deacon is actually taken from a Greek compound of the words dia and kovis. That means to kick up the dust referring to a servant who is so swift to accomplish his service that he stirs up the dust of the street running to fulfill his duty. Wow! Listen what, what he says here to the bond servants, to the assistants. You must be so excited. You must be so in awe and amazing of your God, of your King, the one that you love, that you voluntarily choose or chose to serve for the rest of your life, that wherever you and I walk, we must actually kick up the dust. We must stir the atmospheres. We must stir the soil, the grounds where we walk on. Remember now, you've got glory inside of you. You've got God inside of you. So what it actually says is, where you and I walk, everything becomes glory because glory is inside of you, release it. So the dust that you release are actually gold. It is glory. You stir up glory on the earth. And that is where God says, that is what the, 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 the disciples did. That is what the, the, lead, the children did when they went to the rabbis and things. They walked behind them and they walked on their footsteps that they walk in the dust of their rabbis. Why? Because the dust of the rabbis, the dust of Jesus, are the dust of glory so that they could be consumed by glory. And people, what a season in this dark times that we're in now and all these challenges, we need to walk with a, a, a knowing and a desire to stir up the dust so that all the lost that walk behind us, all the lost that surrounds us, the darkness, should be filled with the glory of God. The question is, are you serving Jesus? Are you a bond servant to Him? Or are you still in control of your life? Are your decisions still made and based on your own agendas? And that is a thing that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and to search us and to tell us, Lord, how much more of myself do I need to lay down? And we know the amazing journey that that. Paul had, and if we look at his lifestyle, we know that Paul truly surrendered. He laid down himself. And what does he say in verse 2? Grace, favor, and blessings to you, and heart, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What is it? Grace and favor and blessings to you and peace. That's been given to us in unity with Christ. What happens to us? We become grace. We become peace. We become favor. We become blessing. We become the manifestation of Yeshua because we are one with Him. And what does it mean? It means that blessings and favor comes to you, dwells with you, and walks with you. What do we focus on? Do we focus on that blessing that's been declared upon you? But what, what does Paul do here? I think Paul sets us an example. He comes and he blesses the people of the Philippians. He declares grace, favor, blessing, peace upon them. What do we declare upon the people around us? 
What do we declare upon our enemies? Do you realize when we start blessing and declaring the beauty and the characteristics of God upon people, even the loss, we are framing and preparing everything for heaven to manifest on earth. And that is so important, what we allow to come out of our minds, what we allow to come out of our mouths as well. We are framing and doing things that will manifest in the natural. Paul says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. What does he say? He thanks God that God introduced them to him. Why? Because when Paul looked at people, he saw it as an opportunity to reveal Jesus Christ. He didn't look at the dangers. He didn't look at the heart. He didn't look at the darkness of the people, their their, um, sins and everything, their shortcomings. He said, what an opportunity. I thank God that he introduced me to you. So now, what an opportunity to introduce them to Jesus. And do we look at people as opportunities? To meet Jesus? Or do we look at what is in it for ourselves? In every prayer of mine, I always make my entreaty and petition for you all with delight. What does he say? I petition for you. I go into prayer with you. I, I do everything with delight because I so have a desire for you to meet my Father. In these times that we are seated in and situated in, what a time to make petition for other people. People that struggle, people that have not seen the light, people that have not encountered Jesus. That we do it with a delight, that means with a joy, that you've got an explosive joy, exuberant joy, extravagant joy in you because you're going to release Jesus into those people's lives. You busy when you go and you petition, you actually release the desires that God has for that person into their lives because you've got a heart for them to walk in the fullness of God because you are kingdom minded. You want the kingdom of God to be enlarged. It's not about you, it's about God and His kingdom. Verse 5 He said, I thank my God for your fellowship. Your sympathetic cooperation and contributions and partnership and advancing the good news of gospel from the first day you heard it until now. Fellowship, it's a partnership. It is intimacy. It is sharing. It's being vulnerable to each other. It's revealing our hearts to each other. And people, it's really sad to say, if you look at the kingdom today, It's dangerous to reveal your heart to people. But how many times do they use that, your vulnerability, against you? But you see what these people have done. They came into fellowship with Jesus, then fellowship with each other. And then there was a place of unity where the kingdom God advanced. And this is one of the key things for this time and season that we need to realize and know. We cannot bring and fill the whole earth with glory unless we start working in unity. Unless we start taking our eyes of ourselves and really make Jesus our first love. What does he say in verse 6? I am am convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, the right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. What is God's desire? He wants to restore you in the fullness of whom He is. He wants to bring you into perfection. Completion means perfection. So now you're going to say, but only God is perfect. When you were created, 
Before you and the mother's womb, he said, I created you, you were good, you were perfect. But now we need to step into it and we know that God will carry on pursuing us. He will carry on um, coming into our lives and reminding us of whom he is. That's why he's given us his word. He's given us the Bible so that we can study it to help and to know, to get the tools, the secrets, the mysteries, how to come to that place of perfection, how to step in the fullness of the authority of Yahweh, how to rule, how to reign, how to be kings, how how to be priests, how to be friends, how to be sons of God. I want to tell you today, God is a finisher of everything. And he even says that everything works for the good. But you need to make a decision. You need to allow him to work. And when he starts working, he's going to challenge you. He's going to test you and let me tell you what he told me weeks ago, months ago. He said, everything that you ask of me, you will be tested on. And how many times we want to give up? How many times when you get tested, we just give up, we, we stay back. But a test is a privilege and an honor to walk free because you walk in the perfecter of all things. You walk with them. And that brings you to a place where you truly surrender, where He becomes everything, that you're basically preparing yourself to walk with Him up the mountain on a mountain of transfiguration. Do you realize the more we surrender, the more we allow Him to be everything in our lives, the closer we come, become to walking on the earth transfigured. Have you ever thought of, just think in your mind, what would it be if the sons of God starts, suddenly starts walking the earth and we walk as light, transfigured? Do you realize how many people are going to get saved? Because we filled with glory. You must remember Moses went up the mountain. He was filled with the cloud of glory. He was covered by the cloud of glory. And what happened? It said darkness flees. Some of the Israelites ran because the glory was too great. And in that glory, it's a face-to-face -face relationship with Christ. God comes to us and said, I'm going to finish you until you in the perfection of glory. People, the earth, the people need to see glory. Verse 7 said, It's a right and appropriate for me to have this confidence and feel this way about you all because you have me in your heart and I'll hold you in my heart as partaker and shares one and all with me of grace, God's unmerited favor and spiritual blessing. This is true both when I'm shut up in prison and when I'm in the defense and confirmation of the good news. There's a big key. Paul declared to them, they've got him in his heart and he's got them in his heart. What did he do? It's taking possession of them. He sees them as family. He sees them as the gift of God. He sees them as God's children. He took possession and all he wanted to do, he wanted to care for them. He wanted to give them the truth. He wanted to reveal Christ to them. And he said, even when he's in prison, he was so aware of them, he kept them in his heart. And he can only do it when you truly love. You can only keep somebody in your heart if you love that person. You see what, if you listen, if you read about Paul and his Damascus experience, he had the full revelation of Jesus Christ. He, he understood the power and he received the revelation of love. That's why he could be such a radical son of God in prison, doesn't matter where he was. He never, he never denied God. He never compromised. Even if he was beaten up, he never, ever, ever compromised on God because he encountered God. And what does Paul do now? He keeps him in his heart. He intercedes for them. He is intercessing for them. He is 
petitioning for them. Why? Because he wants them to have an encounter with God as well. So that they could get the revelation of love, the revelation of Christ. My question to you today is, have you got an expectation right now where you are to have an encounter with God, to get the revelation of whom He is? Because that is so important. Once you see Christ, once you experience Him, once you get that revelation of His perfect love, His extravagant love, and and the revelation of whom Jesus is, you will never be the same again. And you start realizing what privilege and what honor it is to give Jesus to other people and to show them. Yet Paul says, for God is my witness, how long for and pursue you all with love in the tender mercy of Jesus Christ. What does he say? I will pursue people with the love of Jesus. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It will teach us not to give up on people. God never gave up on us. Why do we give up? Because we look in the natural. If God declared something upon you, we must know it is done. It will happen. He's a finisher. And listen to verse 9 and 10. And this I pray, I pray that your love may abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development and knowledge and all keen insight that your love may display itself in a greater depth of acquaintance and more comprehensive discernment. Yet Paul comes and said, he needs you. His desire is that you get the revelation, the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom of love, so that you may have discernment. Do you realize without love, without the discernment and the understanding of love, your discernment is weakened? Why do we say it? Because discernment is empowered by intimacy. Without love, you can't be truly intimate. So there are people out there asking, Etienne, I need more discernment. Please help me. I would say to you, get to know love so that you could be intimate with God. So that you may surely learn to sense what is vital and approve and prize, what is excellent and of real value. Recognize the highest and the best and distinguishing the moral differences. And that you may be unattained and pure and unerring and blameless, so that with hearts and sea uncertain and unsullied, you may approach the day of Christ, not stumbling nor causing others to stumble. People, and that is important. Here he comes again and talks about love, so that we have discernment. And there's such a lack of discernment in the body of Christ. We so many times just look at people or leaders or great names out there, And whatever they say, we just take it and we walk with it instead of having discernment. Taking it to Christ and said, Lord, is this from you? Is this for me? Is this on my pathway? Is this totally truth? Then more people will not get hurt as in today's lives. And you can never blame somebody else for your hurt, for your mistakes or anything because you made the decisions. You made a decision who to trust. You made a decision who to believe and who not. And at the end, it's our responsibility to take everything to Christ. In this season that we are challenged, in the season that so many people get hurt, it's time to get the revelation of love and to move closer to God and to literally Become one with his heart. To take possession of him and carry him in your heart. He says in verse 11, May you abound in and be filled with the fruits of righteousness, the right standing with God and right doing, which come through Jesus the anointed one, to the honor and the praise of God, that his glory may be both manifested and recognized. Righteousness. The fruits of righteousness. People and I see it so many times in life that 
we do things in righteousness, but righteousness are not only there for certain days and certain times and certain aspects. Righteousness is part of your being that God declared you, and it covers and it's in power in all aspects and dimensions of your lives. We can't just choose to have righteousness in certain areas. And when we, when we start walking in the fullness of righteousness, you realize there will never be manipulation and control. Because it's God's will. That's why there's so much witchcraft in the church and the body of Christ. Manipulation and control. Because we are not full. With that righteous. How would I put it? God declared you are holy, you are righteous. He declared it. It's given to you. It's inside of you. But it only gets activated when we start walking in it. When we, we empowered, we allow the Holy Spirit to consume us to step into that righteous now. He says, now I want you to know and to continue to rest assured, brethren, that what has happened to me, this imprisonment that actually only served to advance and give renewed impetus to the spreading of the good news. What does Paul see? His imprisonment, he sees it's a blessing as to advance of the kingdom of God. People, we need to get there. And to realize that we live in a greater season, a greater era, as in when Paul lived. We've been appointed for the seated for the greater works, a greater miracle, the greater things. And what do we need? God comes and he places Paul in a difficult time in prison. And he says, whoa, I've been put in a better position so that I can advance the kingdom of God. Because why? He wants to reveal Christ in the darkness. In the season that we are now, what a time that we're in such imprisonment and lockdown through COVID and other things that we can advance the kingdom. And this will only happen. Your life will only change when you start seeing it as a potential blessing. When you see in the spirit, when you realize what God has declared you and has put you in a position of favor. He's put you in a place where everything around you looks impossible for you to come and manifest, for you to come and show the impossibilities of Him. You see, it's a mindset change. Instead of looking at what is wrong, we need to look at what are we going to change? How are we going to come with an extravagant, explosive way? And reveal Christ. What do we know? Because then we can release in this darkness, in this times and season now, in the semi-imprisonment that we are in now, we can release the Shekinah glory of God. It means it's a glory that rests, that dwells upon. Man, what a, what a position that we are in now. And I want you to get excited about it. I want you to get into this place that, wow, how blessed am I that God positioned me in this prison now, in this season, because in the natural, it looks like we're all in prison, all the sons of God. But you must realize you've got authority over all. God declared it upon you. You can change it. You can terraform it. You can bring everything. You can create. You can participate with heaven. What a season and a time to bring heaven to earth. So much is this a fact that throughout the whole imperial guard to all the rest, my imprisonment has become generally known to be in Christ. That I'm a prisoner in his service and for him. His imprisonment is in Christ. What did he make? I choose to be imprisoned in Christ. It's not really an imprisonment when you're in Christ. It actually means that you are seated, you positioned in perfection. you positioned in glory. you positioned in perfect love. you in position in perfect authority and power. You are instrument of the impossible and everything work out for the good because you are blessed. You are one with Him. See, but Paul had to make a choice. He chose to be positioned. He chose to be a bond servant. He chose 
to glorify and exalt God. And what are you choosing? And also most of the brethren have derived fresh confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ because of my chains and I'm much more bold to speak and publish fearlessly the word of God, acting with more freedom and indifference to the consequences. You see what happens here, and we must realize it. The people out there had their eyes on Paul. They looked at him, what he was doing. And I want to tell you today that there are people watching you that they do exactly what you do because you say you're a son of God. And what did Paul do? From out of his prison, from out of the darkness, he gave them a desire to glorify God, a desire to really go and build the kingdom. They made a choice because they could see this man knew what he's doing. He had so much joy, so much peace. Because he had an encounter with God. So he actually motivates them. He actually ignites them to have desires for their own encounters. So that they can also walk in the fullness. So what does Paul actually do here? Because he's so in Christ. Imprisoned in Christ. That he can only see glory. He can only see goodness. And what happens? Darkness flees when you walk in glory. Sickness, disease, bondage, all those things flees, gets broken when the glory of Christ moves in. When you're in such a unity with Christ, when you are so surrendered, it means that you become glory. You disappear in glory. And nothing, nothing of darkness can enter the Holy of Holies of glory because you are a temple of God and you become the Holy of Holies. Some it is true actually priest Christ, the Messiah, for no better reason than out of envy and rivalry, partly spirit, but others are doing out of a loyal spirit and goodness. I'm asking you now, why are you preaching the gospel? Is it creating your own kingdom, creating your own throne? Was it truly about Christ? And I'm going to move on and I'll just read. The latter proclaimed Christ out of love because they recognize and know that I'm providentially put here for the defense of the good news. Are you defending the good news, the gospel of Christ, the truth? Have you made a choice to really defend him? Because let me tell you, when you start defending Christ with your whole being, you will get persecuted. But are you prepared to do it for him? But the former preached Christ out of a party spirit, insincerely, out of a no pure motive, but thinking to annoy me, supposing they are making my bondage more bitter and my chains more um, galling. But what does it matter so long as either way, whether in um, pretense for person ends or in all honesty for the furtherance of the truth, Christ is being proclaimed. And in that I now rejoice, yes, and I shall rejoice thereafter also. What, what, do we, what does he say there? There are so many people, uh, um, people out there making a show of Jesus for their own kingdom, for their own glory, and they want to be a name out there that it's all about us. If they want to be a person that everybody follows. But Paul says, don't just um, deny them. Don't just regret them. They release the gospel. What should we do? We should rather say, let's speak into those words, the gospel, the truth that's been released, to give it life, to bear fruit. God will work with that person, and let's pray for the person that do it out of self. For verse 21. For me to live in Christ, his life in me, and to die is gain for the gain of the glory of eternity. Is it a gain for you? For God to live in you and for you to live in him. Are you aware of that? And people, that's a big thing. We need to come to this place daily where we start realizing the privilege and the honor 
to be in Christ and Christ in us. It's unlimited gain that we have received, unlimited love, unlimited blessing, unlimited favor that we step into now. If our effort is to be life in the flesh and I'm to live on here, that means fruitful service for me. So I can say nothing as to my powerful preference. I cannot choose. But I'm hard pressed between the two. My yearning desire is to depart, to be free of this world to set forth and to be part with Christ. For that is far for better. But to remain in my body is more needful and essential for your sake. Listen. I listen as I travel the world and listen to prayers and I speak to thousands of people. So many people are praying, Lord, I just want to come home. I just want to be with you. I just want to be part of you. I don't want to be on the earth. But look at Paul. He's prepared to go through prison, persecution. Why? So that everybody gets to know Jesus. People, that it should be such a desire that we actually say, Lord, let me just finish my purpose on earth before I come. Give me grace to finish your calling, your purpose, your destiny, destiny for me so that you can be glorified. We are needed here on the earth. Remember one of the questions that the Lord one day is going to ask you when you get in heaven is, have you fulfilled what I've given you to do? What is your answer going to be then? We should have a passion, said, Lord, give me great mercy. Help me to see truth. Enlighten my eyes, my hearing, my seeing. Enlighten my heart so that I could fulfill because I am needed here. The people need to see Jesus. We need to become desperate to reveal Jesus. Since I'm convinced of this, I know that I shall remain and stay by you all to promote your progress and joy in believing, so that in me you may have abundant cause, um, abundant cause of exaltation and glorifying in Christ Jesus through my coming to you again. What does is, what is Paul say? He said, with me coming to you, I'll give you so much joy. I'll give you so much reason to live, to pursue Jesus. I will show you. I will manifest. And that's what we're supposed to do. We must give people out there a reason to pursue and to desire God. And that comes through the revelation of Him, comes through intimacy, by getting to know, by walking and knowing God, being like Him. Only be sure, as citizens, so to the conduct yourselves, that your manner of life will be worthy of the good news, the gospel of Christ, so that whatever I do, come and see you, or I'm absent, I may hear this in you that you are standing firm and united spirit and purpose, striving side by side and contending with a single mind for the faith and the glad tidings. We must look at our lifestyle. In this time and season now, do they see the glad tidings? And this is the time where we as the body of Christ need to get together. We need to lay down our own agendas. And Jesus needs to become in our agenda. Where there's unity, there's power. The word says, where two or more are together, gathering in my name, I am present. And he said, where we declare together, two or more together, declaring and praying, it will be done. But we must have the same heart, a heart where Jesus' first love wears everything. Verse 29 says, For you have been granted the privilege for Christ's sake, not only to believe and adhere, to rely on and trust in Him, but also to suffer in His behalf. It means that you've got the privilege to be put in prison so that you can be glorified. What an honor, people. We need to get back to this. We need to stand up in the mornings. We need to stand up every day. Desiring to encounter God, pursuing Him with your whole being, your body, soul, and spirit. And believe me, 
in the manner that you're going to pursue, pursue and see God, that's the manner you're going to receive. You're going to receive according to your expectation. And that's why we need to start thinking like Jesus and expect the impossible. I urge you to every day come and expect an encounter of God. Prepare a place for God to come and manifest, to blow you away with His glory and His goodness, that we can become radical servants, bond servants of God, just like Paul. And believe me, what Paul had, you can have more than that. You can have more than that because the fullness of the God at three and one has been given to you. Don't let your own mind, your own desires destroy the manifestation of Jesus in you. Don't let worldly desires destroy you, but start seeing what as it is in heaven and bring it to the earth. This is an amazing time and season for you to be glorified, to be exalted, so that God can be glorified and exalted. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. And we come today and we repent for looking in the natural, focusing on the natural, natural, focusing on our own earthly desires and our own needs. And we declare we're going to release the desires of you, of heaven, because then we are blessed as well. And then everything around us will be changed into the glory of God. Our desire is to reveal Christ in spirit and truth. Our desire is to put this whole earth aflame in the goodness and the love of Yahweh. Lord, we choose to be bond servants. And we declare now we're not in prison. We are seated in glory. We declare that our presence, our bond servanthood, is a positioning of the perfection of glory. And we say thank you that you're going to finish it in us, that there will a time and season we don't even have to preach anymore, but that we just walk in the revelation of Christ. And everybody around us will be touched and come to salvation because of seeing you in and through us, through our lives. That's our desire. So Father, we bless you, we love you, and we will truly celebrate you in all that we do. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I bless all of you with the perfection of the power and the revelation of the love of Yeshua. Bless you. Have a great season of glory. Amen. Thank you.